this comes from Alvic 4011 7560 underscore. Need a few guys Mike is high on for the Sixers in the draft so that I can get excited before they ultimately sell all of their picks. Oh, yeah. You I, mean, I, said, I said a couple earlier, uh, and I think uh, if you subscribe to uh, uh, our boy Zoe, uh, his newsletter, um, mm-hmm. com slash newsletter, um, there's a couple that he's been uh, dropping here and there. I really He likes Tyrese Maxey. Uh, Is he a, the Kentucky guy? Yeah, combo guard out of Kentucky, uh, lefty. Um, I think he's lefty. Why am I now having second thoughts about that? But, uh, yeah, I like guys who can, you know, shoot and dribble <laughs> and pass a little bit. Tyrell Terry, I think, could be special. I think Kyra Lewis could be special. Um, Cole Anthony is interesting because he had no help at UNC, and so maybe on a better team, like some of his action would be better. He just didn't pop for me that athletically or quickly, but maybe he's just like a fine sixth man, like scoring guard. Um, Desmond Bain as like a um, kind of like a more sturdy shake a little bit, like can defend his position more, like uh, gives you a little bit like when Terrence Davis gave uh, uh, Toronto kind of like a even Desmond Bain is like a. He's built like a smaller, more dribbly and shooty Grant Williams. Um, so those guys are great. I love Malachi Flynn, who's just like a who's just a dog uh, with the ball in his hands. Grant Riller is really interesting. I like Skylar Mays um, at LSU. Good name. Um, who's really pops athletically, can shoot, um, and like and just like he seems like a smart player. People are kind of lower on him than I am. I, I got to watch more tape to make sure. Um, he's a four year guy at LSU. Um, Isaiah Joe is a shooter that can fly around screens and hit and take like 12 threes a game. Um, when is the draft? Is it November 18th? I don't think they... No, they, they did. Do they officially I, decide? Because it's yeah, been, it's been moved look. a couple times. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure they settled. But once the season's over, then I'll, then I'll fully dive in and we'll, we'll get back to that and everything. Yeah. It's a, I have it as November 18th, which is a Wednesday on my calendar. Yep, November 18th. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll get into the draft. We'll definitely yeah, get into there's, it. There's a bunch of good guys. I love, obviously, if, if Horford's here, we don't need that, but if, if Horford ends up going, um, I love Xavier Tillman. Maybe, maybe my favorite player in the draft. Just like a, such, he's like exactly like physical. He's like Al Horford now, except like more physical and like a better passer. Um, just He was a uh, four-year player at Michigan State. Just like anchors of defense would be would be perfect to come in, never play with Embiid, um, but just like if you if you can somehow get him in the in the second round, he is our backup center for the next ten years. Like that would be beautiful, um, but obviously right. not if, if Horford's here, not a not a priority. But it's fun. I mean, the draft is the only reason to be alive, you guys. It's, it's exciting. There's guys. They're young. They're smiling. They're having fun. Uh, too often people assume that like oh it's going to take too long you can't really get help in the draft or all that stuff and I just think every year it's proven that that's not the case. Mm-hmm. Tyler Hero was a, a I think a late lottery pick. Um, there's there's a ton of guys that that can be had at any point. I mean like it's just people are Grant Williams was, was helpful in the in uh, the playoffs for Boston. Um, there's, if they're good, they're going to be helpful. If they're good, they're helpful. And I think the yeah. guys you know, are coming out more ready than ever. And especially that's why the benefit of having Embiid and Simmons, and I know they don't work perfect together on offense, but like they're so good defensively each that if you can build a system around them, you can survive less good defensive players uh, on other spots in the court um, because they can make up for those kinds of mistakes. Like Goran Dragic like, isn't a great defensive player. Like obviously Hero and... And Kendrick Nunn are not great defensive players. I think Ro- Duncan Robinson actually is pretty good and doesn't get enough credit. But he was good last night. I'll tell you that. Yeah, and Duncan so I, and like Kelly Olynyk, like there's guys like these. There's plenty of guys that are not that good defensively. But if you put them around other really good defenders in a really good system, you can get by. And so I, I think that they can. You know, the Sixers have the benefit of being like, well, we just really need this kind of player, so we can you know s- skimp on the other the other stuff. So. I'm you know, that, that can benefit. Watching the Lakers last night, and it's amazing because they fucked it up in that final Butler drive where he got fouled. But I was watching their like communication on switches on pick and roll so much, and like watching when Caruso would decide to go over it on somebody, or when they would communicate about switching, and they like so in often fucked up. Like, it was just amazing to see. Not everybody on that team's a great defensive player, like you're saying, but everyone sort of knowing what to do. And again, like, you watch that final Butler play. It was amazing that LeBron 
I, like, I don't know if there was a miscommunication on there, but basically let him go right past him. But uh, most of the game, just watching their communication on defense, on screening, I think was a, a lesson that not everybody has to be great at it. Yeah, you know? too too often I think the Lakers last night just switched and gave right. gave Miami the the matchup that they want. And I and I it like you know getting Markeith onto Jimmy, or just basically getting AD off of Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Um, it just it just happened too often, and I think. I'm a guy that if you have the personnel, I think switching is good. I think they're, you know, you don't want to just go behind screens and uh, mm-hmm. try to fight through and then allow them to, you know, all that stuff, get open looks. Um, but when you do have someone that you want to stick on someone, you can't just allow like kind of like a half soft screen to be the thing that like gives them all of a sudden, oh, here's the matchup. That's really easy to do. I think you got to fight through that a little bit more. But it's it, it really depends on personnel and stuff. I'm interested to see how the Sixers handle that next year. Hey,